look on on the Novak Djokovic question, or Novak Djokovic as he shall now be known. I think it's not clear why he wasn't allowed in because it seems like he didn't actually have a medical exemption. So it, it would appear that he's chosen not to have the vaccine. And for me, that's quite a serious issue. You know, on principle, Australia and any other country cannot let an unvaccinated person in because it's their borders and those rules are clear. And I think, you know, Djokovic is an attention wielding fool who thinks that he's better than the rest of us mere vaccinated masses. But there's another level to this. And this is the question you're getting at about sports stars who are either like basically no other, who earn enormous amounts of fees from not just their performance, but from business sponsorships. You know, all the companies, all the big brands that fund Djokovic and have made him a very, very rich and famous man. Well, those businesses are not going to get back to normal if we don't all get the vaccine so we can get rid of lockdowns and get rid of this awful virus. And so the idea that you have someone like Djokovic or some of the many Premier League players who are said to have refused the vaccine in this country, they are setting such a bad example for their fans and their followers. Mm. You think about all the young people that love these sports stars that will now be getting the message that is fake science, that is nonsense, but that is dangerous. Yes, yeah, uh, but even you could agree with that. But, you, but where does that take you, Benjamin? Because you could easily say to a Premier League team, you can't, we're not, if you, you put a player out, you, that's your right, but we're not going to have the cameras on him when he's got the ball. Or we're going to say, look, he can't, he can't play. He, he really can't play. I, I mean, I think the other players, you know, take the example, you know, at least tennis is socially distanced uh, by by nature. You know, the, a team sport like football, I think the other players could quite well be entitled to be concerned and unhappy about being with an unvaccinated person. You know, we can all pass COVID on. We're learning that the hard way. But you're less likely if you're vaccinated. And also, you know, what worries me most is that it is playing into one of the most dangerous myths about COVID, which is that you can somehow... Be, have a level of fitness that means you overcome any risk from it. And that is just nonsense. Tom Daly, one of the fittest, healthiest people in the world, no doubt, you know, a man that won a gold medal at the Olympics, five months earlier was in a hospital bed with COVID before he'd had the chance to get the vaccine. And so when you have people like Djokovic or other sports stars who seem to be saying that because they're so fit and healthy, they don't need it. Well, I'm sorry, there are people out there that will be in better fitness than me, but they will be built in a way that means that if they get COVID, they could get very seriously yeah. sick. But, but, and I hate the idea that people could make those decisions because right. of celebrity sports where, where does that Where does that take us, Dawn? Because, because it, it, at the moment, we're just talking about trying to persuade people that it's better for them to have the vaccine. Yes, and I completely understand Benjamin's point about being younger and fitter and healthier does not make you immune from A, getting COVID or B, getting seriously ill from it. Hopefully the Omicron variant is our pathway out of all this along with the vaccine rollout. Um, now, and regardless of what you think personally about our, um, Australia's border rules with regards to vaccines, this should never, the whole Djokovic thing should never have happened in the first place. I mean, he was given a medical exemption by the uh, um, the uh, the, uh, the uh, Victoria government, which is the area he was meant to be playing in, and by the Tennis Association, but not by the federal government. And that's the whole confusion. Now, you think somebody with the organisation of uh, Djokovic, his team behind him, um, would have sorted this out before he even set foot on the plane. So we're in this ridiculous situation now where he is imprisoned, his words, and his dad was yesterday compared him to uh, Jesus and Spartacus because he's fighting for Serbia now, evidently, as well. So the whole thing has become a, a complete political football um, and it's a whole mess that should not have happened. But it does raise very, very important points. I mean, so your question today is, you know, do sports stars have a duty, and I'm talking about this person, do sports stars have a duty to me personally to be vaccinated or to have another medical procedure and no I don't think they do I, I think they have the vaccine if they want to have the vaccine but don't do it for me do it for yourself and for your loved ones I, I don't actually care Jeremy if I'm honest I support West Ham as you know I don't care how many of the players for my team have had a vaccine or not I just want them to win games to be honest with you and I'm sure many of Fans that's, that's, feel the same about him. Look, yeah. regardless of Australia's rules, that's a different issue. But 
No, they do. Sports stars do not have a duty to me personally to have a vaccine or a medical procedure. OK, so so nobody wants to compel them or punish them by taking them off the pitch, although the Australians have done that. It's not crazy. I mean, the Australians are basically saying to, to Djokovic, someone else will be the, the Australian Open, Open champion this year. Not you, mate.